Hey, it's Dr. Sebastian Gonzalez with Performance Play Sports Care. This is one of the exercises or mobility activities that we use with our baseball athletes, players, and pitchers to decrease the amount of pinching pain and increase the amount of pain free range of motion they have with possible or small rotator cuff tears. Now, this is just one of the exercises we use, but we do have a whole list of the exercises below if you check out the link description under this video. And remember, if you do need more explanation of shoulder blade mechanics, scapular stabilization, centralization of the glenohumeral joint, or a roll and slide, and actually how the shoulder works, we do have another video in the description below. It's intended to educate you so you get the best possible care and rehab your stuff and prevent it the best. Now this mobility exercise is called distraction with a band. We can use different angles and obviously guys can get very creative with this. Now I'm gonna use a GoPro just to show you the setup that we have. So right here we have a rig, we have this band on it. This is typically about the thickness that I like to use personally. If you can't tolerate it, then you might wanna go a little bit heavier. Now again, the idea of this, and if we're doing, I'll do this left shoulder just because it'll, you guys can visualize it a little bit better. You want, the, you want this band to be pulling the ball almost out of its socket, yet obviously not ripping it out. If you do have shoulder instability or have dislocated your shoulder before, you might want to be careful on these. Obviously check with your doc before you start anything. But here's usually how I start. Make sure that if you have any hair on your arm, it doesn't pull your hair off, so position it carefully. The first one I'd use, just go straight back. Let it pull straight out here. Notice that I'm going into a squat position mainly so it doesn't yank me forward. Okay, bringing the hand up. You can also bring it down. Now notice that rotation about the elbow is relative. So I can pronate, supinate my hand, but it really does nothing to the elbow, to the shoulder. You actually have to rotate the shoulder if you want motion about the GH joint. Now, next thing you can do is also increase the range of motion or increase the sho shoulder basically going overhead. We can simulate this by keeping the shoulder in the same position by tucking the chest forward. And if you do this, you'll feel it start to pull more from the bottom part or of the lat area. Usually holding this for about 30 seconds to a minute or so. The next range I typically go in is sideways. Notice that we're almost horizontal right here, going palm up, which is what I typically prefer, holding this. Or if you want to challenge your range of motion, you can go into this position. Notice that my arm did go up again, which again, people that have impingement of the shoulder a lot of times cannot tolerate overhead motions and a lot of times this can flare them up. So be careful if you have that type of condition. Lastly, I'll switch hands just because I wanna make sure that I demo, is pulling across. Now, this one, what I typically like to do is I like to take the other hand here and I like to pull it as well, like I'm pulling this way. Now, this one you're gonna feel mainly about the shoulder girdle in the back, but you will feel like it's just pulling right here as well. Now, we can internally, externally rotate it. Remember that I said rotation about the elbow does not mean rotation about the arm. Notice that the arm, or sorry, the forearm, the humerus. Notice that it's not rotating. You have to actually rotate. And if you want to do so, you can grab it and physically rotate it either direction, which can be helpful. But remember that this actually simulates one of the orthopedic tests, which will pop up as possible being positive with shoulder impingement, so be careful with these. Now this exercise is typically inserted into a small circuit which takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Other things we might include in the circuit are inclusive of myofascial release, stretching, distraction techniques of the glenohumeral joint, as well as scapular stabilization and even trunk control or isometric core strength ones. If you're interested in the type of program that we typically put together, there's actually a PDF that we offer that you guys can seamlessly follow, at least in regards to prevention of these conditions, which should be in the link description below as well. Now, if you learned anything from this video, please share with your teammates, at least one of them. A lot of times your other players and athletes don't know about this type of thing, and a lot of times it's too late once they get an injury. So preserve their longevity, do them a favor, give this a thumbs up on YouTube if you're on it, and then share with your friends.